I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas and the under God. I will graduate from high school equipped to excel in the college and career of my choice, dominate 21st century skills in leadership, knowledge, language, and technology to compete in the global economy and serve as a successful citizen in my community. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. You may be seated. Today we have a riddle for you guys. We will give you the answer at the end of today's newscast. What is always found on the ground but never gets dirty? Today is the official start of Hispanic Heritage Month. We will be celebrating all along the, until October 15. Stay tuned for more facts as this month moves along. Next week will be the end of your first six weeks of the school year. Time is starting to fly. Remember to take time to rest this weekend because you will be taking tests next week on what you have learned so far. Also, remember to get your work turned in. You are running out of time to get things done and you need to make sure that you're passing. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, a time for us to recognize and celebrate diverse culture, history, and contributions of Latinos past and present. But what does it actually mean to be Hispanic or Latino? What do these labels apply to? And why do we celebrate in the middle of September, right? I'm gonna help you understand it all. I'm Guad Venegas, NBC News and MSNBC correspondent and a proud Mexican-American. Now, most month-long cultural celebrations start on the 1st, right? Um, so why does Hispanic Heritage Month start on September 15th? It's because a handful of Latin American countries actually celebrate their Independence Days on September 15th. Plus, Mexico celebrates on the 16th and then Chile on the 18th. But there wasn't always a whole month to celebrate Latinos or Hispanics. In 1968, Congress passed a law ensuring that presidents would recognize National Hispanic Heritage Week each year. Then 21 years later, President George H.W. Bush became the first president to officially declare it a month-long celebration. Hispanics are the second largest racial or ethnic group in the U.S. with more than 62 million people descending or originally from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Now, you've probably seen the words Hispanic and Latino used interchangeably, but they don't actually mean the same thing. The term Hispanic typically refers to someone whose family came from a Spanish-speaking country while Latino refers to a person with ancestry in Latin America. Uh, and it is, by the way, possible to be both. Brazilians are Latinos, but they're not Hispanic because they speak Portuguese, not Spanish. But then you look at Mexicans, Dominicans, Cubans, and so many others from Latin American countries who are actually both. And this brings me to the term Latin X. Where does this fit into all of this? Well, Spanish is historically a gendered language with masculine and feminine words for all of us who speak the language. We know what this means, right? Take, for example, the word alto, which is tall in Spanish. For men, it's alto. For women, it's alta. Well, some are trying to do away with that by using gender-inclusive terms. That's where the X comes in, into Latin X. Now, there is a lot of debate on whether or not to use it to describe other Latinos. Uh, some are even using the gender-neutral term Latine instead of Latinx. A good rule of thumb is to just ask people what they prefer to use to be identified. For me, they all work. Many Latinos like to identify themselves by the country that their families come from, like Mexicans, Mexican-American. Others might use more specific identifiers to describe themselves, like Afro-Latino, which some prefer to acknowledge their mixed Black and Latino heritage. Then there's the uh, term Chicano, which was coined by Mexican-Americans during the Chicano movement of the 1960s to describe their own unique identity. By the way, I identify as Chicano, Pocho, or Mexican-American. They all work. So what does this 
tell us, right? Hispanics are not one homogenous group that can be lumped together. Each Latino culture has its own unique set of traditions and its own definition of what it means to be Latino. And we celebrate all of them this month and year round. In some rather strange news, Stranger Things has made headlines again, but this time for something miraculous. A 12-year-old named Austin McNally saved a man's life using CPR he learned from watching the episode of Stranger Things. During a therapy session in the pool, Austin's therapist lost consciousness and went under the water. When he realized that the man was not coming back up, Austin pulled him out, pulled him out and performed CPR. He was revived and checked out by the, an ambulance. How amazing is that? In the words of Antonio Tijerina, the president and CEO of the Hispanic Heritage Foundation, you are not lucky to be here, the world needs your perspective. They are lucky to have this. Always remember that every single one of you can contribute great things to this world. You are placed here for a reason. Remember that you matter. The answer for today's riddle, what, what is always found on the ground but is never but never gets dirty, is a shadow. This is Joshua Stewart and Kenneth Bravo. Signing off. Have, have a great weekend. weekend.